uh, J- Jamie's mommy's a mummy. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's terrible. Yeah. All right, so let's go to five. Let's you go to co-sign five. five, right? Um. Okay, so when I was talking to Mike earlier, four and five, all right, some, there are some years where I like four more than five, and there are some years where I like five more than four. Right? It's they, they, it's a toss-up between the two. I mean, well, I, so I, I, I I like it. But you want just, to set off five, or you want Iron Mike to set off five? Let Iron Mike set off five. I'll set off five, and you know, here's my notes on the pros for five, and I will say this. Obviously, the intro with the pumpkin on one and two is ill. Right. Having said that, the intro with this one on the pumpkin where it's like, and yeah, it's yeah. carving, that was good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That sets you up for something like, okay, maybe it's, I, it's I have that good. too. Ill intro showing, you know. Yeah. yeah. That was um, a great callback to one and two, and I liked how they did that because right. we missed that. We didn't have that in three. We didn't and didn't yeah, have it in four. four. I, I thought the theme, again, was good enough. Right. You know what I mean? That would possible, be apple. I know, no, 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 that makes sense. Because, again, I think it was only Alan Hayworth do, doing it. Was John, it? Okay. John Carpenter kind of just left. And, again, they're just doing the same motifs that they did before. So I agree with that. Another plus, again, I, I like the rain sequences. I like, you know, that kind of vibe. So there was a real rainy mood there. Um, what do you think of the cinematography? I didn't care for it. Um, it. To me, it wasn't. To me, it was just like point and shoot, point and shoot. Mm. It wasn't. You know why, right? Really, why? Um, I, the director. Uh, I heard um, the cinematographer said he really. The director wanted more of a European look in terms Is that of cinematography. Right? I didn't he, even goes, know that. he goes to how he wanted him shot with something that was very common for European films. And in that's that why they day. went with that. Okay. You know, and mm. again, I, his name was Dominique. And I forgot his last name. He I, he only did one other movie, which the is a French Am- guy, right? Yeah. Yes, he did Do- uh, Amityville Four, the TV Ooh. movie. Well, he that was I saw something shit. on the making of I think it was Five, where he was saying this is going to be one of the better ones up there with the original. He nah. wanted it that way. He, he had, let me. I will say this about Five. Five had the enthusiasm of a horror movie director. Four was good, but I don't think Dwight Little was a horror movie director, in my mm-hmm. opinion. I could be wrong. Mm-hmm. That's not a derogatory statement. Right. And uh, none whatsoever. I Carpenter <clears throat> is like Eric. So Spawn and I were talking earlier, right? A good example is this: The Exorcist is a new Hollywood movie. Was a new Hollywood? Was a new Hollywood movie? It's a movie where it's a director's film. The director just wants to tell a story, beginning, middle, and end. Doesn't matter what genre. He just wants to tell a story, right? Mm-hmm. Where Halloween was directed by. A horror movie fanatic, a horror movie director, a guy who only wants to do horror movies, sure. or sci-fi movies. It's a John Carpenter, so you can tell the difference between Halloween Four, where he was a director who's gonna tell a story in this genre, right. where Halloween Five, it was directed by a guy who wants to only direct this genre. Gotcha. And I felt Five was more aggressive. Again, I'm sure the hurdles he came up with was what anybody came up with in the late '80s, mm-hmm. uh, namely Friday Thirteenth Part Eight. And Freddy and, Fr- and Nightmare on Elm Street Part Five, right. they wanted to get grimier, and again <clears throat> they got their nuts chopped by the in, um, by the rating boards on mm-hmm. that because again it's still in the '80s and you still could only show so much. So they wanted to go hard, and they wound up getting their legs cut off at the knees right. at the finish line, and this is what happened with Five, um, and that's my take on it thus far. And I'll let you go ahead and finish what you were saying on Five at this point. Okay, I had two more pros, uh, you know about the movie there's there's a moment where loomis walks to the forest and kind of speaks to the darkness as he's speaking to michael to mm-hmm. he's telling him to come home i thought that was done well oh yeah i really like that moment um and then the second moment that i like with loomis is when loomis collapse on he collapses on michael's chest after that squabble they have in the house and to me that kind of brought them together to the closest that they've ever been you know since mm-hmm. he was his doctor so to me it had a couple of good elements right but the cons, the list on the cons is, is quite a quite a bit longer, <laughs> you know, starting with the mask. Mm-hmm. The mask was terrible. But it was better yeah. than four. Well, anything would be better than four. Yeah. It, well, yeah, I think mask-wise. Uh, to me, the hairline was, was a little too high. Well, Michael's like, getting older, you know. No, no he, Michael looked like fucking Woody Woodpecker <clears throat> in a fucking Halloween mask. And yeah, and the way they rested the mask yeah, the on him. Look at nose. You see that fucking yeah. cone on that nose? It looked like he was gonna fucking peck someone's eye out. Well, the mask was off his shoulders too, sticking out. Yeah, oh, I hate was. that. Oh, it's I know it was horrible. That like, every time, me, everybody who wore the mask, it was underneath the fucking grease monkey suit. I, this one's like, here, let me just put it on right fucking here, and it looks so fucking. Sloppy. It looks terrible. And then I'm gonna quote Spawn on this when we did the Star Wars one when he was re- referring to uh, Terrence Stamp. 
Remember mm. you said they had Terrence Stamp and they did nothing with yes. oh, my dude. Yeah. I felt the same way about Daniel Harris not being able to speak for the majority of the movie. And she didn't like that either, by the right. way. She did speak towards the end, small right. lines. I still felt that she was effective and I thought her acting skills shined. Yeah, I liked it. I, 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 I thought it worked. I, 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 yeah. it worked. I didn't like the but whole... But I agree with you and her. Yeah. The, I like her talking more. Sure. You know. And that whole forced language between her and Michael. Awful. Oh, I, I have it right here. I hate the E.T. Elliot psychic connection. I yeah. think that shit is fucking whack. Basura, I liked it. Say, I'm not right? going to lie. Yeah. I, um, I I liked it. No. <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like supernatural shit with Mike. Then We're, why the hell do you watch it then? He always made? has something new. new <laughs> he's supernatural. He's supernatural and, and, to uh, us, but not to that world. To I not, think to that so, world. So, like, so in, in Michael Meyer, if at Halloween 1... What psychic connection does Lori have with with Michael Myers? Isn't it weird that he was stalking her the most? Something no. can something so, was okay, together. There's theory out there that he's actually stalking Annie. No, and I don't think so because he could have killed Lori and he didn't. He purposely missed and hit her arm instead to make her fall. He could have fucking nailed her right then and there. He doesn't miss. So you think it's a psychic connection that they have? Yes, because they're brother oh, and sister. You're reaching, brother. Yeah. You're hey, reaching. it's a power of the druids. We'll get into it though. Already, six. I already you're touched reaching. on. Uh, Loomis and how he's, it's just kind of tiresome. I, but I going disagree. Back to what you were saying, though, wait, wait. Um, Hold on, but let's finish about Danielle Harris's acting. I did, and I feel I hear her what she said in terms of she wish mm. she could have talked more. <clears throat> I did like the fact that she couldn't talk in the beginning because that shows the repercussions of four. And I, I thought, mean, it, yeah, and that, that there's made, an explanation. I was good with that, it. right? Uh, now this is where Loomis gets a little awkward, and it with her, especially with Danielle when he's he's screaming at her, he's grabbing <laughs> at her. Face to face, right, right, where's it? You know, and it's just really bizarre behavior for me. This is really to me where Loomis probably his role Jump should have been shark. cut down. Jump yeah, yeah, I think so. You got to watch, rewatch it because well, he's. So I did. I, yeah. Is it because he's desperate though? Is it because at this point that's he's what desperate? I'm is he is he himself tired because this guy has been a thorn in his ass for so long and he can't escape yeah. from this nightmare? That's a good so point. now is he now mentally breaking down? Because I noticed that too. That's a good he, point. He's losing his patience because. This is what he's consumed in. He's when you're trapped in shit. That's what's all going to come out of you. He's already broken now. Michael already damaged him. Yep. He's been burnt. physically. Yep. He's, he's that's, that's a fair, people, valid point. People put the blame of Michael Meyer on him. He's right. already dealt with so much yes. that guess what? He's now damaged goods at this point. Right. So, so him. That, so him losing his patience with with Danielle. Right. Is it's only, understandable. Is reflective of the continuity of the series of what he's had been dealt with. Right. Which would only make sense that's, at this point. That's fair. Right. And I, not only I that, agree. he. I thought he was. I liked um, Unraveled Loomis, and I think he had the best lines. Let me quote this line. He in says, five? Okay. "Yeah, in five. He had a great line in five, and it's probably one of the stronger lines in the whole thing. And I hate five. So anyway, but he goes, <laughs> "I pray that he will burn in hell, but I know." That hell will not have him. Yep. That shit sounds like the way he says it, it's so simple. Anyone else says it, it it's like, you know, right, but right. it's like poetry coming out of his mouth. It's yep. like where Tarantino writes for for um, the German guy um, and from. In, in, oh, he's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. And, and, or when, when Tarantino writes for for, yep. for the Samuel Jackson. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So it sounds like poetry with him saying these lines, and it just it just works. I, I, I love Loomis. Um, I, I think I'm biased. I'm gonna be honest. I'm biased with, with okay. Loomis. Yeah, um, that's fine. But yeah. you know, I, 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 there's some great points in this, um, but there's a lot of shit. So I, I well, let me, I, let me, let me. I'm almost yeah, done. Ahead, yeah, then yeah, we'll yeah, get sorry, right sorry, to sorry, it. I'm sorry. Yeah. Annoying as fuck. Boyfriends across the board. Don't even give me stuff. About across the board. That. Period. You know what I mean? Uh, the, right. the one dude cleaning his car. Then you got the other boyfriend. Yes, just the, annoying. With the knife thing. Goes, the knife. Yeah. Right, right, right. I just, you know, um, it's just common fodder. Like, I'm, I'm okay with that because no one cares about it. It becomes Friday the 13th it, at that point. Yeah, I agreed. Agreed. Okay, and then let's get to the Myers house. Obviously, it's different. We know why. Right. Yep. Unacceptable in this franchise. Mm -hmm. Unacceptable. It doesn't even look like the neighborhood. It doesn't even look like the house. In my opinion, you can't do that right. here. You but can't, in the 80s, you though, figure you know, something out. You know what I mean? In the 80s, I'm sure it was cheaper to film out Midwest, and that's something they were like, I'm sure myself was like, yeah, they'll be fine with it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's reasons for all that. But, I but mean, yeah, yeah. I um, agree with Mike, and I agree with Vito. It's just, you know. Not feeling the tear coming out of Michael's eye. I kind of like that, actually. Okay. Do you? Because Why? it represents his rage. Like, he's fighting something. Like, whatever demons uh -huh. is pushing him. That rep that represents something about him, and you know, you'll never know. That's why I like about it because it's too it's like where that tear come from, and what does it represent? And the fact that uh -huh. I don't know, and it's so ambiguous, I kind of that's why Co I like it. Correct me if I'm wrong here, and that's a good point. The last thing my problem here is the stance, the Michael stance. 
he just holds the knife like this. It seems like for the majority yeah. of the time. Yeah, run into my knife, please. Run into my knife. Yeah. And again, and that's because you don't. You didn't have a producer that was really strict. Like, hey, we got to walk like this. What they did in the first two films, I want you to do work on that. And again, that's part of the producer, part of the director, right. and, they and failed. instilling and that's a mistake, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They failed miserably. And, and, and instilling the characteristics of the walk because his walks and movement is very much part of the character because he doesn't talk, sure. so his movements do the talking for him. Right. All right. Oh. So out of all of them, I think these have the most notes. I have a lot of notes on, on five. five. Is that I right? Despise five <laughs> because they had so much momentum. Right, momentum. Right, right. Excuse me. Um, from four going into five, and they really shit the bed. Um, Daniel Harris <laughs> acting, I thought she was on point. Right. Um, but Tina was, I think, was the friend, and she is the worst, most annoying fucking character. Oh, in yeah. she Horror is a, movie no, 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 history. No, no, hold, on. She, hold on. No, 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 no. She makes Shelly from fucking Friday the 13th. Uh, Shelly's fucking three, awesome. Uh, look like fucking, you know, Robert De Niro, and she makes <laughs> fucking Joey in Friday the 13th part five look like Pacino in in Godfather 2. You know what I'm saying? Oh, she's no, fucking no. horrible. She I, makes me Really? Angry. Okay. And, and, Why and, and, are you so frustrated wait, with wait, her? Wait, wait, wait. Her dance in the beginning, her fucking, just her stupidity. Her just, she's just, and I, I feel bad, I, I feel bad right. whoever wrote that shit for her or her, I, I don't know who to blame. It's just an abomination on screen. It's just, um, it's God. Now hear me out. And I get why you're saying that, right? Credit due to the actress to make you feel that much hatred for the character because she that tells you the, how talented the actress is. Do but you that's not her so job. You were supposed to like her. No, we she's discussed an this a million times. But no, that's not where it works. We talked about that. In, uh, but no, 40 but, minutes but ago. she was designed to be annoying. And here's the thing: I know. Why? I talk to the writers. She was directed by the director to be a certain way. So it's I okay. Think, I like I said I agree with you. She I think she was trying to be the she was trying to be her. funny and she was trying to be charming and she was trying to be you know like like a goofy funny character that stands out but it, I, it, it she failed miserably. I disagree. I think it worked out that she was that annoying character. Credits due to the actress for pulling that off because you have to be that great of an actor to pull that so much passion from you that you hate the character so much. She did her job and she did her no, job well. I think she did it. Two, it was the opposite. I, I think actually, she was trying to be charming and it. No no no. Here's the thing. Yes. And two. I actually know someone in real life who has that same behavior and personality. So, like, goddamn. Is she in a mental ward? She should be, <laughs> but she's not. But my point is this: you have to be one hell of an actor to bring out that passion of a fan watching the movie. To be like, I hate this so much. You did a great job. Who? No, I, she did a bad she, job. She, did she an was amazing trying job. to be funny. She was. She was trying it to was be. It was per the script, per the oh. direction she was given. No. Yeah. Well, that may be the reason, but. I think it failed. Don't you think? Yes, on all levels, it failed. I, it I have her back. I have her back okay. on this no. one. Okay. <laughs> Look at uh, Annie and the other ones. She, uh, totally. How right. how iconic is totally? Right. You know what I'm saying? And she's not annoying. annoying. Right. She wasn't annoying. She was a likable character. Sure. This chick was trying to do something similar, and it failed. I disagree. I, think I hate she the was circus working. music okay. with the cops. Oh, we didn't even touch the on that. Go ahead. Bull. Bull, bull, and they're running out, and they're just idiots. Yeah, that was. Ca- you know what I'm saying? I want to. One of your Vito gives a pass for everything. He, gives I, a pass I, for everything. I, he I, likes I, everything I, bad. I, Howard the Duck. I'm can't. telling you. Bro. First of all, how? Why are you bringing Howard in? I told you, leave Howard because out of this shit. Because that is your. You know, saying that. that no, first of all, I this. Like oh, he also likes Harry. vanilla. He also likes the vanilla ice movie, Cold as Ice. Go ahead. Actually, it was cool. I saw the movie recently. It was a cool little fun movie. I'm not saying it was like fucking Oscar worthy, but it wasn't bad. What cricket? <laughs> hey, you say what you will, but it, it is what it is. But Howard the Duck, that, how, first of all, that movie is a cult classic. No. Watch the comments when this drops. You'll be like, hey, motherfucker, Howard was dope. What Fuck, you talking about? Uh, that's right. That was with Jessica Rabbit? No, no, no that was, was uh, that? Uh, chick Le- from Tom- Leah Thompson. Yeah. Leah Thompson. What am I thinking? Bestiality, What was bro. the one with Jessica Rabbit? Bestiality. Which is the movie with Jessica Rabbit? Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yep. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. That was, uh, Maybe that, that was Zemeckis. So yes. So okay. So I didn't like all the men in black bullshit. I, I'm not a fan of the thorn. Um, yeah. What do you think about the black? I, I do guy? not like. I it was cool that. with it. I thought it was a dope. Especially the, if you look at part six, you see the reveal. It is just 
I don't know. That that whole thing uh, was, was whacked. Even when it. he was shooting at the end, it looked like he had like a Tommy gun. Yeah, that was a mis- yeah, yeah, was dope. God, you know, that on, was dope. I don't know. I thought this shit was dope, dude. <laughs> he becomes some anti-hero in this one because the characters are annoying. So now you're rooting for Michael, which is defeating That's the purpose. That's an interesting point. I like that. You know what I'm saying? Like defeating that. the purpose. First uh, of all, don't use those characters. That Everybody was rooting for the bad guy in the fucking 80s. We only went to see these movies to see them fuck up people. So don't be using these characters as an excuse. Oh, we're rooting. We were rooting for Michael in four. We were rooting for Michael in five. No, that's not the We're point. Rooting you for failed. Jason and you six. We, you just agreed with me forty minutes ago about failing when you turn the mo- you, you make the monster less a monster. Well, at that point, it is what it is, right? I mean, we're going. We, but you th- just contradicted yourself for thirty minutes ago. I did not. You co-signed what I said, and now I'm saying it again, and you're not co-signing. I am co-signing. I'm just saying. First of all, we <laughs> always root for the back guy. when I'll he co-signs it. All right. Ah, either way, all right. we're all rooting. For the bad guys, whether it's Michael Myers, Jason right, Voorhees, Freddy Krueger. But what did you be rooting for more if he's killing someone that you actually care about? Hold on, I got. Can I interrupt okay. here? Yeah, okay, 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 real quick, real quick. We'll get right back to you guys. Another mask issue. Oh, the of beginning, course. the beginning of five, mm-hmm. by the way, gives you the ending of four, right? Mm-hmm. So he, he uh, falls down the thing and goes down to the water and ends up in dude's uh, little camp, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When he collapses, when Michael Myers collapses, and I'm going to attach some pictures so you can see. When he collapses behind the man and falls down or whatever, right. it's the five mask, and it should not be. Right. It should be the four mask. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, they you, totally failed. So yeah. which, which makes you wonder, did they have both masks, and they were they like, let's go with this one? Was that like a... I, I don't know what the they fuck probably they were said, They probably, like you said, Vito, back then, they're probably like, okay, this is the mask we have now. Let's shoot this flashback. Or, you know, there you go. Before, which, again, is a mistake, you know, but right. that's probably what happened. So, um, in my opinion, the strongest scene in this debacle called Halloween 5, uh, was it Revenge of Michael Myers? Or, yeah. Revenge. Okay. The, the strongest scene to me is when he's wearing the other mask and he's driving around the girlfriend. And I felt that that was very 1978, very tense. I did like that scene. That um, was a good scene. That's a, that. that that fit his uh, personality. I agree with on, you there. on fucking with uh, people yes, and like getting close to them, but not, but not letting him know. Basically, kind of like thing. Bob, right? With the when he was wearing the white right. sheet over his head, right? Bob, exactly. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So that scene, I feel, is the strongest. Uh, that's a good point. That's I, the strongest okay. scene in the whole debacle of this movie. Um, the barn scene, those You're characters. You're being a little harsh by calling it a debacle. I'm oh, just it's, it's it's a, it's an abomination. The kills were whack. Well, go ahead. Kills are whack. Um, the barn scene is garbage. I, I couldn't wait for these characters to die. Sure. The guy with the knife, um, the, the stupid <laughs> cops, and it's funny because for years they always said that Friday the Thirteenth was a ripoff of Halloween, but Friday the uh, Halloween Five is a ripoff of the last uh, of. of Friday the 13th movies of the mid-80s. Oh, that's a bunch of horse Total shit. rip-off. That's a the bunch un- of horse uh, the, uh, the unlikable characters. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, the, the just it was just... You didn't like movie. Tina. I like Tina. That was her name. You're Tina. the only one that liked Tina. I guarantee I'm sure you. she has plenty of fans out there. And they probably belong in that home where your friend is. You know what I'm saying? The the, the, the one that's just <laughs> like... Either her. way, they still still fans out there. So you cannot say it's an abomination. Okay. All right. Car chase scene uh, was intense. I thought that was intense, but yeah, come that was on. good. That was good. That was it, good. I, it was that was uh, you know I, the more I watch it, you know that that scene should have been over in zero point you know zero point six seconds. Were, no, no, you know no, what I'm saying? No, and it's fun as That's right. a nineteen sixty seven that, Camaro. That she was dragged been out. Road kill. Here's here, here, here's the thing though on that. So you're talking about that drag race? He should have killed him sooner. Remember, he walks. He can run if he wanted to, right? So he's probably chasing him just to fuck with him even more. Like, right. yes. I'm okay. cool with that. I'm okay. cool yeah, with that. He could walk have, on he, roofs, he, too, if he wanted to. <laughs> yeah, he, could or, have, he has a hard time. <laughs> Either way, he knew he could have killed him more, but he wanted to make him run and suffer. He takes great pleasure in scaring you and with the terror that you feel before he kills you. Right. He li- he gets off on that. Right. So, to so me, I, yeah, you know, I'm just saying, you know, but I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, again, like you said earlier, that. Loomis's last minute attempt to reach out to him, go yeah. home, go home. Um, but he's I, always done that. Oh, and I, 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 you know, it's funny is I've seen this movie a thousand times too, and the thorn mark on the wall for some reason I just it, it popped out this time. They introduced, they call it the Thorn Trilogy. I don't remember seeing it, I the didn't Thorn see, in four. There was no Thorn in four. Uh, the I first know. time you see it uh, is on it's five, right? Right. But, it's, on, it's on the opening credits where you see Mike. And you see it on his arm. That was but because whack five he, is connected to four, and then it ends with six. That's yeah. why it's called the Thorn Trilogy because it started from here. You know, it was whack that. when Michael burned the thorn on the hay. Come on. Yeah, no, I was cool that? with that. Remember, it was like a big like he's really gonna design. I don't know, man. I was okay with that. Yeah, it was whack. Cool with that? 
And I'll tell you why. <laughs> yeah, if I can, why. and I'll, here's I love how Vito gives passes for this awesome man. Uh, here's here's why. If I can accept <laughs> everything else in the prior four films he's been right, in, right, right. I'm not gonna nitpick that because at that point, yeah, nothing, the whole thing nothing, would he, be, nothing he right. should be doing should work. I should be finding faults in everything that he does. But that's, that's besides getting point. shot at the end of part one, what faults would you have? He got fucking blown away in four. No, 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 no. I said besides getting shot at in part one, what else? What other faults would you have with part one, with my, when it comes to Michael Myers? The fact that he get he's always out there. If you think he's always mysterious, is he a lot? Is he real? Is he not real? Like okay, okay, okay not faults. Let me let me back this up. Let me clarify okay. this. People say, well, Mike brought up a good point. He he put up you know. The, you know, um, the, I'm sorry, but yes, the, okay. the thorn symbol, right? But it all goes into what, what, whatever. Why you can't nitpick anything? Because look at everything that he does. You know what I mean? He somehow magically appears. Like for instance, he somehow made it to the hospital faster than the nurse did, right? And he's right there watching her. Like he knows where to pop up at. He's always That's there. That's fair when you look at it like that. So if you want to nit, you, there's nothing to nitpick because there's so many things that. How do you explain that he does what he does? How did he even know where Laurie fucking lived? Right. You know, or be out there, and what was it? Why was it that he just has this obsession with her if he's just a random person? You know what I mean? Right. How did he know that Jamie Lloyd was his niece and would know where to go and where to find her and where to right. go through her shit? Well, they, they in the opening scene of part four, they they say, uh, uh, no, in the in this in the ambulance, he says that, that uh, his the, the only family member is the knee is the daughter of his sister. But where would he know and, what, and how she would be at? That's what I'm just saying. So I can't sit there and make, make, pick, Nick pick the thorn symbol when there's so many, other, any other, so many other examples we could question. Just let it be. But what's like in terms of like uh, um, supernatural? Besides him getting shot and getting up, what was supernatural about him in part one? You don't really see his eyes. You never see his eyes. There's but always that, that darkness in his in the mask. I mean, you see his eyes right, when, he removes, that, when he removes the mask. But, but that's not to do with supernatural. Yeah, he said Carpenter said he's uh, maybe he's supernatural, maybe he's not. You know, it's ambiguous. Really he took the shot. That's just what. Yeah, he but said, this, right? this. Okay, he took the, the thorn. The thorn shit is supernatural. Shoved down your throat. Yeah, but it's all, the it's ambiguousness all, is the brilliance of it. But it's is just, it just supernatural. Like, but is not. We right. have to understand that after somebody moves in, it's just saying, "Hey, guess what? Yeah, he is supernatural." Because n- never mind the gunshots. If you want to argue, okay, he took some gunshots. Maybe he didn't hit any major arteries. He still fell off a two-story house on his back. Why was? And yet he got up. No big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, or how he can crash through a well, that's double plated door, glass- and that's why he moved like a, a okay. robot. Okay, then, ha- then how do you explain he <laughs> yeah. he, he yeah. walked through a go. double glass a double um, glass door? Oh, that was rage. Then that would mean, Walking. by definition, that Laurie Strode is supernatural in one and two, if they're the same bloodline. Mm, there you go. Maybe. No, so no. I I, but- I, I I take him going through the gra- uh, glass as rage. And just he, straight up rage, you know what I'm saying? He, like where someone's just to that point where he just fucked his shit. No, he, he was saying, walking too calmly. He killed. Two, I don't think Laurie is supernatural. I'll, I'll take that back. He is just, he's possessed by some sort of demon. He's that's just, whack he, to me. He's, this, he's something about devil. He's he, about hell incarnate. He is from hell. He killed Judith, right? His sister. Right. She didn't make it. Right. So would his she soul be, is she tainted. supernatural too, right? His the soul. Same bloodline. Right, yeah. She, he has she a, should be alive. Right. He is a tainted dark soul. We don't know how how much how deep that darkness goes. And the, the beauty of it is the mystery, and I think the thorn. I agreed. It, it killed it to me. But anyway. oh, but but, here, but that's but, okay, and, I, okay, and I won't disagree with Spawn on that one. But that's also what makes it so. Uh, but guilty I, I, pleasure because that's right. what they did in the eighties, like. Right. Fucking Freddy Krueger got a backstory. That well, that see it. that worked. No, I think Freddy's oh, yeah. backstory worked. Okay, well, so let me ask you this: A man who attacks children <laughs> gets reincarnated, and kills them in their dreams. Right, makes no fucking sense. He would have been. He would have burnt in hell based on all religious facets. It, it was just. It, he just. And somehow it was just a, a, a supernatural like, thing. Keyword, his somehow. whole thing. His whole thing is supernatural. Freddy is supernatural. Let's so stick to Michael Halloween. Myers. Yeah, we'll stick to Halloween. We'll stick to Halloween. Thing, okay. Yeah. So anyway, all right. So uh, again, like you said, the last minute uh, attempt to reach Michael in the in the woods. I thought that was great. Um, let's see. Uh, Daniel Harris uh, uh, her acting. I thought she was great. The Native American tear was uh, you know, like the commercial from the '70s, where yeah. the guy throws the trash out and he just, you know, the guy has the tear. I thought that was ridiculous. Yeah, right. Um, Loomis, um, you know, fucking up with you know, getting with Mike was cool. Long awaited them having a one on one. Black man um, in the mask and robe. That was garbage. Which, I, I just, it. Which, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, 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 this ending is probably the worst. So four, I thought was the best. Five is probably the worst. You know, I just hate it. Out of the trilogy. 
Uh, out of the franchise, maybe. Okay. You know, I, okay. Yeah, definitely. It's in, at the bottom, at the bottom of the list. Now, go ahead and tell us how good five is. I know. I like five. <laughs> you know, I like four and five, but four and five is a notch below the first two with Sorry Michael Myers. That's just without a doubt. Mm-hmm. And um, I was I was telling Mike too. It seems weird that so four and five are connected together, right? Mm-hmm. Just like one and two connect together, just right. like Resurrection is connected to H two O. Right. And it is, it, I, and I wonder if people will agree with this that it seems like whenever they do the the follow up to a standout movie, so one was a great movie that blew up. Right. When four came out, it did gangbusters. It was like number one for two weeks. For right. What Mustafa was saying, right? Yep. And H two O was well received. People hated Resurrection, hated five and two, didn't get the love that it gets now. Right. Is I just I think it's very unique in the series. That's a great point. That these that the follow up sequels to a standout entry is never well received. Right. It just seems to be sure. the curse of the series. It's right. like and, I, I, and that's a great point. And great I wonder I like that. if Halloween Kills and Halloween End will have a similar fate when it comes out. I hope not. I hope not. We'll get to that. Let's go but to six. I hope not. Okay, so six produ- uh I don't remember the theatrical cut at all. He told me to buy the producer's cut. Yeah, the he producer's cut's where it's at. It is um I, so I'll take over this one. Let okay, me start. Yeah, this, you, you, this you, is his baby. So watching six, I remember seeing the trailer and getting this real amped up about it, right? And I go, we see the movie. I was on a date at the time. And I just felt so let down. Like, I thought this movie was going to be so much harder than what, Is that what, right? what, was a, than what it was. And then what we got was just a jumbled mess. Like, I felt like they, you know, in the theatrical cut, due to the editing process, because they didn't have faith in the producer cut, they hacked up the movie just to make it a standard uh, slasher film that, you know, touched upon the druid elements they were supposed to talk about in 6, right? So you felt cheated off of that. Uh, the kills, they were okay. They were... They were okay. I mean, it was it was the movie. Let me convey this the best way I can. I just felt like the way the trailer came off, I thought the movie was gonna be a lot harder than what it was, and I felt the end result was a movie that that was a lot that played it was so much dummy down from everything. You know, I was my letdown. Like I didn't like the whole the ending. I thought was kind of like very nineties ish. I don't know how, and because I don't know how else to to describe it. You know him, Michael Bean being down with green blood. I just, it just kind of felt like it ran off the the rails from what it was supposed to be concluding. Like it was supposed to conclude four and five, and I felt like it all it did was go off the rails and went in its own territory. And I never got the appropriate follow up or conclusion to what was talked about at the end of five. It just kind of just went. Yeah, ten years later, he banged his sister, had a nephew. Now he wants to kill the nephew. That, you know, yeah. So they brought back Tommy Doyle. And I love Paul Rudd, but again, it just, it didn't feel like the movie, the way it was edited, went anywhere. Where the producer's cut, it's so much more coherent. The characters are much richer. Everything makes sense to see what's going on. And yes, say what you will about the man in black at the end of five, but that's what they had to work with. So when they started to work on number six, the idea was like, hey, we get it has a jumbled history. We do need to clear this up though. And they specifically hired someone to do that job, and then they kind of pushed out at the end when they got the final product and hacked everything up and re-edited the film. Where to me, the producers cut and say what you will about the Man in Black and Five, I won't argue with you on that. But the whole purpose of Six was to wrap everything up and just to end it. Well, the producers cut actually does that for me. And again, this is all subjective. You may feel differently about it, and that is fine, and I understand and can appreciate that. But for me, when I watch 4, 5, and 6, it's the right way to end the Thorn trilogy because they actually go in it hard enough to where they link up 1, 2, 4, 5, and 6. Whether or not you agree with how they did it is completely subjective, but at least they acknowledge everything that came before it and tied up the loose ends and I thought it was well. I uh, to this day I don't know why Dimension Films did not have faith in the producer's cut of Halloween Six because Halloween <clears throat> because the Crystal Michael Myers that came out. I don't. I mean, it, it did well enough that they spawned two more sequels, but I think that's because Scream came out mm. and they realized they had a franchise <clears throat> that they can milk off of again. But to me, well, this was before Scream. You know, oh, this, okay. but I'm talking about why they ended up doing a sequel, another sequel anyway. Because oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. The success of Scream right. and led they, him to go to the, what else do we own? Okay, right. we have Halloween, let's do that. But we'll get into it at that point. Mm-hmm. But I really do feel 
the producer's cut is much more coherent and it tells a it tells the story that it's supposed to tell okay it's kind of like with alien 3 you have to mm. to appreciate alien 3 you have to watch the producer's cut to get the full story because when you take a full story and you cut out chunks of it you you leave either the audience unsatisfied or confused and that's how halloween 6 is the, the, the theatrical cut because again i'm supposed to you're supposed to give me the follow-up to what happened at the end of five and the theatrical cut of six does not do that in any satisfactory way whatsoever to me mm-hmm. but with the producer's cut yes it acknowledges everything from one two four five and six and i think it did it well enough what do you say what do you think it was refreshing to see, even though this was Paul Rudd's first film, correct? Mm-hmm. It was f- refreshing for me to see him in a different role. Wait, what was it? Was it? Was it? Was it, was it no, I, this I, was I, introducing it. I think I said. It, but I thought Clues came out before Halloween Six, though. It, it, it might. Did. It was the first time I seen him. So. Yeah, for um, me, okay, so Halloween Six came out. Um, Nineteen ninety-five. Right, but it was like the winter of ninety-five. Like okay. Halloween, so there, I, was it before or after? No, Clueless? Clueless came out in the summer of ninety-five. Even though this one says, I think it says introducing. Yeah. So anyway, so I think they filmed it prior to and then. Gotcha. And, yeah. okay. For me, it was introdu- It was uh, refreshing to see him um, in a different type of role. I really liked the setup in his room. Yeah, stuff on the case. It kind of is reminiscent of true crime. Right. So I like that part about it. He was trying to figure out what you know what happened to Michael at this point. Um, I did like that aspect of it. Um, he was a little creepy, a right. little weird. Kind yeah, of I have little, that written down. A little awkward. Yep. And I think it's because of what him. he experienced in right. the first movie. He was damaged from that and bullied. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I enjoyed that part of it. To me, uh, a step up from five, and that the Myers house looks more like the original than but five again, did. The problem is again and going back to like you said, they're trying to do something, but they just—it's frustrating as a fan that they just couldn't correct get that right. If you, in my opinion, you got to try to get that right. Now, uh, the, some of the cons for me are going to be no Daniel Harris, right? And she wasn't a big fan of that as well. Well, right. she would have been old enough to play. She totally would have. It was seven years later when you put her at 12. They, and they didn't want to pay her. She asked for uh, a certain amount of money, which I think she deserved because, again, it, she was as, as her connection to Halloween is, in my opinion, the equivalent to Jamie Lee Curtis Absolutely. at this point. Absolutely, and Loomis. Yep. Yeah. Because and she was the center focus of 4 and 5. Yep. You're coming back to 6 to see the conclusion of 4 and 5. Right. And because they didn't want – they didn't feel – she was worth the money. Mistake. It's a mistake. It's a Thorn trilogy. How do you not get that right? And you know what I'm saying? That that would be the equivalent then of not bringing Jamie Lee back absolutely. to play Laurie Strode which in is a why sequel to two. I agreed. And which is why I think when the passing of Jamie Lloyd happened, it wasn't that impactful because it was portrayed by a different actress where I think if it was Daniel Harris in that death scene... It would have hit harder. harder. Yes. All right. So some more of the cons... Um, the negatives for six that I picked up. There's a couple little things like when Jamie was running, holding the baby. Right. It was a blanket. Oh, it, yeah. it, it seems like they didn't even try. <laughs> Just try to do well, something. It's a, it was it's a, a horror blanket. movie. I didn't expect him to use a real baby. <laughs> I love it. In there. Passes, right? Passes. He gives everything <laughs> passes, bro. That's cool, man. Um, it's up good movies. If it's a good movie, he'll he'll you know. Was well, different. I'm gonna hold you to a higher standard. I can't get mad at McDonald's worker for just giving me a Big Mac. I already know what I'm getting when I walk into that establishment. Now, if I go to a five star restaurant, yeah, I'm gonna critique you a lot differently. It was disturbing to me too, man, to see the baby get painted on of that thorn. You know, sitting there naked in front of those dudes with right. the robes and shit. That was just kind of disturbing to me. That's right. that's more subjective than. To yeah. me, that felt like something from the early '80s, like those those sword and sorcerer films, like the Beastmaster. They did something similar right. where mm-hmm. they did that, where they, you know what I mean, where the, or like which, the newer movies, like uh, Midsummer, that type of shit. You know what I'm saying, like the right, uh, I didn't you know, see the the Vitch, the Vitch, that type okay. of stuff. You know. Oh yeah, so the kid, right? What's this kid's name? Danny. Oh, oh the little yeah. boy. There was a part where, remember, he was screaming in terror. There was a point yeah. where Michael's trying to get to him. Yeah. But then there's a scene where he actually goes. To where Michael just killed somebody, kind of walks into the house, and yeah. that girl had to chase him, which I yeah. thought that was kind of weird. One moment you're freaking out, the right. next moment you're brave, and you walk in. Right. Remember, he goes up the stairway, yes, and Michael's there. So I thought that was kind of weird. I thought the whole cultist concept to me is whack. I don't think anyone, I don't think Michael is controllable in that Thank sense. You. Um, like I said, I, I get why they make choices. Right. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to shit on that. You know, trying to do something different, but right. for me. 
a cult, and though it didn't work because he wiped out a lot of them cats in that room, right? Yeah. He did. Uh, I would say, like, um, watch if you get your hands on the producer's cut, and then watch it. Watch four, five, and six, with six being the producer's cut of that movie. Right. And there was a line in two that really caught my ear because I was watching two last night again. And there's a scene in the school where Lo- they're they're acknowledging that he wrote in blood Sam Haim, and Loomis starts going over the history. And he says the druids felt. By sacrificing one of their own from the clan, the rest of them would be safe. That tied into six, the producer cut explaining why he's controlled by things. So the whole point they're saying is Michael was chosen to do what he does to eliminate a, his family bloodline so the rest of the world would be safe. Spawn's not buying it. Well, Spawn doesn't buy a lot of things, but and I, guess, I agree, it is out there. But again, we didn't write four or five. It's just what they had to work with. You know what I mean? Because of what five did, they had to make sense on that. So the writer of six went through everything and tried to find as much that he could to tie all the movies together. Another kind of downfall for me was the annoying dad. I mean, it was a good payoff to to see him get killed the way he did. That was a good setup for the payoff of that. He was now. Let me ask you: He looked that actor looked familiar. Very, very familiar. I forgot he was in something. I think he was also in RoboCop. Let me look was, him up. I, I, I think he was also. I, I, I'm not sure. I looks, think he might. He have, looks very familiar. Yeah, he looked and sounded I, very familiar, yeah. but I can't think of a movie I seen him. But I just know like I seen him somewhere. Yeah, I think he was also a RoboCop. You give me the hot tag because I'm ready to fucking. Oh, you ain't getting. <laughs> All right, so this whole uh, Halloween Six gives me Jason Goes to Hell vibes, where oh, let's try something new with something established, and I respect that. Again, I, I I'm all about trying something new, but this was so out there it just didn't fit it didn't feel like it belonged in the whole franchise even four and five even though they're they're not perfect they fit they they still kind of feel like they're part of the because whole, it went really out there with the whole you know Drew thing right right um I, at the time i i forgot that uh, mustafa uh akkad got killed in a, a no, terrorist. no no he, no he was he was still alive no 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 but i'm just saying when i would watch it when i wrote this down i forgot that he had got killed right. in a terrorist act but I was thinking, what an egomaniac. His name, Mustafa Akkad, and it's like 30 seconds, and then it says presents, you know, or whatever. Uh, oh, but yeah, I, yeah, I take yeah, it yeah. back because, he, you know, he, how he got killed. Um, I, uh, sick oh, opening kills by Michael. Um, the bird hand was good. But it's the, that 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 the thing of, no, 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 the horrible 90s uh, versions of are my favorite 80s characters. So, New Nightmare. I think it's super boring. We'll talk about it in a later episode. Jason Goes to Hell. We talked about it last episode, how much I fucking despise it. I like and it. Halloween, I, of course. Um, <laughs> Halloween 6, all shit. All, th- all three of them that came out in the 90s for Halloween, their 90s installments, Freddy, Failed. Jason, they- miserably. Awful. Um, now, however you feel about the Thorn trilogy, one thing to me that's a positive, again, Donald Pleasance, um, you know, the... Just having them in there adds credibility. Now let me stop you real quick because you saw now you you seen both the producers cut and theatrical cut, right? Yeah, but I don't remember the theatrical cut. I saw okay, so I didn't see this in the theater. Y'all brothers saw this in the theater. I want to. You should tell your theater story again. I didn't see this one in the theater. I so at the time I, I when I first moved back uh, back to California in like the late nineties, um, my my girlfriend at the time and I went to go see Scream. She never saw the Halloween, so. We went to Hollywood Video, we rented all of them, and that's when I first saw this one. And I was like, what the fuck is this shit? You know what I'm saying? And I enjoyed four and some parts of five, but this shit was like the, the theatrical cut. Yeah. I was like, what? It was the a jumbled mess. Yeah. And so, but I don't remember it because that was the only time I, I ever saw it. So let me ask you this then, because you brought up Donald Pleasance. Did you enjoy Donald Pleasance in the producer's cut, his storyline, and how he worked in, was working? Yeah. And it? I also like the fact that he, the first thing he says is, I had some skin graft to my face, so I don't scare little children anymore. You know what I'm saying? So they acknowledge the fact that they're not going to, you know, I, 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 to me, I think he might have wrote that in because he. This sounds like something he. He didn't want to deal with the makeup, and two, they explained why he was so slow that he had already had a couple strokes, and that's why he was slowing down. Right, and it, and and at that time, it made perfect sense for him to be slow. He couldn't be Van Helsing of 1977, 78, or whatever. He had to be, yeah. you know. So I, I, I'm, I'm always, I, I'm like I said, I'm biased when it comes to Loomis. Um, I think this had the first uh, bathroom scene of the franchise, uh, which there's going to be many more to come. Uh, the kid Danny with the knife was what well, I thought was well done. Yeah. When he pulls the knife on on the the on the, the, the asshole the, the dad. dad, yeah, the his granddad. That was um, a good. One. 
but that psychic connection stit that shit still sucks to me i think that's whack um you know had it been daniel harris of course when she died it would have been benefited um the strode mom uh she's from better off dead uh so the the thing with her she looked like a stereotypical midwest mom so she was good um she looks like lorraine from mad tv if you don't know that character look up lorraine from mad tv okay. it looks just like the mom from uh halloween six but what the fuck is Loomis just walking into this bitch's house like they know each other? You know what I'm saying? So he's, oh, by the way. Because he's know. Loomis. He can do that. No, he can't. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I Bless thought that you. was whack. Um, she had some strong acting. She was a good actress. Sam Haynes shit was cool. I, I, don't, I don't know. I just didn't think it got pulled off. I was intrigued with the Sam Haynes stuff always. I always but thought that was strong, but I don't think they no, conveyed it pr- good. Because it was all oh, talking about the producer's cut? Just in general, the, okay. the one uh, the producers, yeah. This, the the, the, I'm a, the yeah. only one that I remember is the producers cut because I've seen it most recently. I do agree. To me, Loomis was more uh, natural and comfortable in retirement. Right. For this yes. One, you know what I mean. Again, the uh, you know the whole voices, um, the, you know the Michael hearing voices and shit. I, I, uh, the the radio da- uh, dude was a total douche. You I know agree. What I'm saying? I was glad he died, which defeats the purpose. He oh, becomes the shit. anti-hero, you right, know. Right, right. Um, I like the nod to rear window with um, with uh, Tommy Doyle looking from Tommy Doyle book. looking from the thing. Sure. I, I dug that, um, and the fact that Michael is a soldier for the Thorn Cult, I thought diminishes and is beneath. I don't think he was a soldier. I think they... it, it beneath it's beneath Michael Myers to be a soldier for anybody. He is a single entity. He is a one man show. He's the one man act. He, he I don't. It he's a just, one man actor and he's Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasance. No, I'm saying him as a killer, as a character. You know what I'm saying? It, it, to have him be a soldier for Thor, to have him be Vader to the guy's emperor does yeah. not work. So I thought that shit was whack, midsummer bullshit, uh, ruin. Uh, I don't know. I, I just, the switcheroo was cool at the end where, oh, it's Mike in the mask. and. So let me you ask know, you this. So. Now, this is my so, theory on all this. All in all, it's a fucking F minus. Now hear me out. Now this is my theory on that. So now that you saw Mike do the switcheroo at right. the end, right? Did it make what well, the switcheroo at the end of H two O going to resurrection more plausible? Knowing that he did it uh, once, yes. he could do it again. Yeah, it does. Now and is is it also possible not to jump the gun? Or we well, can we can because it's going to go right into it. So go ahead. Do you feel if it's cool? You, if you go to, no. yeah, if using the producer's cut only, right? right? Could you say the producer's cut? ties in continuity A, B, and C because it shows, it ties in Jamie Lloyd with um, Laurie Strode and the fact right. that Mike went ahead and knows how to take off the costume and blend in just to hide like everybody else to go about his mm-hmm. business. Two, is it plausible based on the age and the fact that 1998, um, she had her, when she faked her death to mm-hmm. save um, Jamie Lloyd, Jamie Lloyd, mm-hmm. When she faked her death, is it possible she had another son at a wedlock and kept her son with her and established a whole new identity, becoming a dean in H2O? That's, I mean, I, you know, if you want to put that mind can of thing, that, you know, is that, I'm okay with do it. Do you think it's possible that Jimmy didn't know she had a brother that was a year younger than her? Probably happened in, you know, somehow happened in wedlock. I mean, that's cool and everything. Cool. I, yeah. Yeah, but, but I, could, I, I, I don't like pos- the fact that the cult exists and uh, I just... You're, it, you're right, you're right, you're right. But I I'm would, just saying, as a producer's cut, though, at the end, mm-hmm. when Michael frees himself from everybody and you realize he took off everything right. to walk out in public and blend in with everybody, is it possible that when Jamie, that when Laurie Strode faked her death so Jamie Lloyd would be separated from her she had a son out of wedlock and decided to keep her son only because she already changed her name and is no longer Lori Strode anyway and then changed kept him as the one remaining piece as she changed her whole identity and right. became a see but, but the thing is the, 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 the thing with Loomis just defeats your whole premise because Loomis she had died of a heart attack years earlier okay now years earlier could have been in 1996 because it was two years after. Remember, H2O right. was 1998. Yeah. So could you could say years earlier is representing, is, is talking about 1996. Maybe he died right after the whole... Maybe. I, you I, know, would, I pers- would separate the Thorn trilogy from H2O and anything. Right. Like, I, I I, so I, you see it as a separate continuity I, I altogether. Would, yeah, I wouldn't think to even attach those. Me right. personally. Right, because I don't like the cult true. aspect. Right. But what, when you get an opportunity, if you're able to order it or view it, or however you get it, it watch the producer's cut, and then look when you get to the ending... What cut Ask do you have? What, what's the cut you have? I got the regular oh, okay. cut. By the way, the 
the Michael in this one to me moved probably the worst out of the entire franchise. Halloween he 20 or Halloween uh, 6. Oh, yeah. He was flailing his arms too much. I thought he was a little too heavy. Right. Yeah, like I, I wrote down, like when did uh, you know uh, Gandolfini, yeah. <laughs> James Gandolfini, uh, you know, dresses Michael right. Myers? You know, did you, all... did you feel that way? His movements were the same way in the producer's cut, or no? Yeah, he was a, all of a sudden he was a fat fuck in the middle. You know what I mean? I'm like, well, he is middle age. I'm sure he gained some of that dad, dad, dad <laughs> weight. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he had a he had kid, dad so he, he had, had dad weight. You know. <laughs> But I mean, I, I have no love for six at all. Uh, there's no redeemable anything. One thing I want to jump back real quick that I shout did out like. to six mask by the way. Yeah, he, he loves, loves six. six mask. Yeah. And the, the, it is a great mask. But one thing about five that I like that I uh, I wanted to bring up that uh, I felt never got props is right before um, Rachel gets killed, which I, hurt me. I felt they killed her too early. Uh, but I love the character, so there was the horror like yeah. we talked about earlier. Uh, but when she lays down on the bed, when Tina lays down on the bed, you see it clown there right bef- there's a clown on the bed that look I, I i believe it looked like mike mm. like you know you the know, red the and white okay yeah the red and the white i believe okay. um so i thought that was a nice little right, foreshadowing right. you know but anyway so let's go to 20 h2o uh you set it yep. off you want me to set it off 20 yeah. 